Hello and welcome to consultrading.com. In this lesson, we're expanding on what we learned in our previous lesson about effects by creating some of our own effects and also some more advanced selective ones. Let's begin. So let's jump straight into it. Here we have the same show file and arrangement that we had uh, in our previous lessons. Today we're just going to add on top of it and at the end of this I'll also make the show file available to you. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to add an effect pool to our view here. To do that, in this empty space that we have here, we click in the empty space, we go to Pools, Effects, and there we have it. We're also going to save this view. To do that, we go to Store, and we click on one of the view buttons that are on the right hand side here. So we're just going to update the one for programming. We only need screen two. So we're going to click please and save that. Now we're going to run through a couple of different types of effects. We're going to start with just recreating an existing effect. We're going to start with a dimmer even odd, and then we're going to move on from there. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new effect. To do that, we can either right click or we can go store and click on an empty object such as this. We can see that it's shaded out in grey which indicates that there are no parameters on it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to name it. We're going to click assign twice to give us the label keyword. Then click on it and then we're going to call it dim eve odd. We're then going to go into it and on an on PC session you can use the right click button or on a desk you can click edit and click on it or touch on it if you're using a touch screen obviously. Then we need to add our parameters so we click on add and we select dimmer dimmer dim and then we have a dimmer sign so if we come out of it and we select let's say our 101s bring them to 100% and run our dimmer even odd we can see that we've just got a normal dimmer sine wave. If we want to make it an even odd we go to groups we set that to 2 and now we can see that it's grouped by two. And that's a dimmer even odd. We can also mess with them a bit more. We could say that we want blocks of two, which means that rather than just going all the way through, it'll do two at a time, which sort of gives you that off and on one. And then if we look at a winged one, it goes from the outside in. So if we go two, the effect, instead of running from left to right or the first to the last fixture, it will start from the outside and work in. We could also reverse that by going minus two. And now we have that. To reverse it, we can also go to the direction and we can change the direction. So now it goes from the outside in. Now we've created a dimmer even odd, we'll dive a little bit deeper with the LED park end. So if we select those, we can see that they're currently doing a, a winged effect from the outside in. We can go and reverse that, and we can see that it goes the other way. We can also, now that we've got eight fixtures, play a bit more with the blocks and stuff. So we'll turn off wings for the moment. We'll set it to two groups, which will give us our odd and even look. We can also leave that on, and we can go, we want blocks of two. And there we can see that it's doing blocks of two. We can also make it blocks of three. And you can also do it at the top. So we can even make a winged effect with blocks of two. that is a winged effect as well. And there you have it. A really basic way of building your own effects. We're going to delete that for the moment and we're going to move on to selective effects. So one fantastic thing about MA is that you can create effects based on presets and make them selective presets. So if I grab my lead plars and I go to my color preset pool and I scroll down to an empty section, 
I can store in a couple of colors. So we'll bring these up to 100%. Go to our special dialog. We're going to have red. We're going to store there. And then we're also going to grab blue. And we're going to store it there. And then with fixtures selected, if we right click or click edit on one of these areas, when we go to create an effect using color, which is, you know, RGB, we can see that we've got a quantity here. And if we click show selection, we can see in our fixture file, these are the fixtures that we've got selected. A selective effect means that when we come across to our low and high values, instead of just being able to key in numbers, if we right click or use the edit key again, we can see that we the two presets that we created are there. So I can go red and blue and reverse them. So the blue, the blue low value is red and the high value is blue. And the other one needs to be red blue. Because we're not using green, we need to change the form to a flat low, which means it'll set it to zero. And then if we reverse one of these, when we run the effect, we have a red blue sign. And we can see it really well demonstrated here. Let's just zoom in on them a little bit so we can see them a bit better. With this, we can also modify the effect as we need to, so we could make it a slightly different motion. It's up to you to sort of play with the effects, I think. Effects, effects are wonderful things, but you just have to sort of mess with them. Once again, you can do, we can make them winged effects. We can do blocks, so we want, you know, blocks of two, if we want the effect to be slightly more chunky. We can even do, I don't even, so if we go two groups, we can see that we've got a nice odd and even there. See, however, that we're getting sort of pink. It comes down to it that you might have to change some of the parameters so that you get There you go. So it's just a case of messing around with them. Now what we can do is we can now go assign and we can call this red and blue. Now as it's a selective effect, right now, as we could see, if we went and selected just the lead paths, and run the effect, it would work. But if we wanted the 101s, we can't click on it. All it'll trigger is the lead par one. But what we can do is we can either create a global effect that does it, or we can just update these two presets that we're using for our high and low values. So if I select the 101s and I put them in red, giving them intensity so we can see them and then just merge over the top of our two presets we used. Let's do a blue one, making sure that there is no red in it. And we merge over the top of the blue. Now if we select both fixture types and click take selection, now it'll work on both fixture types. There we go. And it's as simple as that. Now, if we didn't want to do it via presets, we can also do it by manually doing it. So if we wanted to make it a global effect rather than one that referenced two presets, you can do it as a global and we'll do that as well. I prefer doing it with one which is referencing presets because then if I update them or it's a color wheel fixture, it works a lot better. Things like two color steps for like sharpies and stuff, because it uses a color wheel, 
means that I can define the colors a lot more easily and it is in fact pretty much the only way to do it as a, a normal form doesn't work over a color wheel because you're not dealing with three different color parameters, you're dealing with positions on a color wheel and raw values won't do that. But we'll create it anyway, we'll use the 101s. We'll create it as a selective effect at first and then we'll come back to it. So we've got our effect, we're going to call it Red, blue, global, we're going to right click, bring in our color values, we're immediately going to grab our green, set that to low, we know we're not going to need that, and then we're going to change the direction of the, the, the blue, and then we're going to try running it. So we're going to click on it, and we can see that we've got We've got it running, but we've still got that hideous pink. So let's have a look and see how we did the normal red and blue. So we had PVM for both, and then we just reversed it. So if we do a very similar thing, because we're after the same effect, we've still got that annoying one in the middle. So if we try to set our width to 25, Now we've got sort of an odd and even chase because it's going backwards. If we set it up with blocks, you know, if we if we mess with the blocks a little, we might be able to get something a bit nicer. So if we went blocks of two we can get sort of that red blue look we could also change it so it wasn't such a snap so if we changed it to a sign and dropped our groups we could then mess with the widths again make it a hundred And you can pretty much do anything. The, the great thing about color effects and stuff like this is you can build them once and then export them again at a later time. I mean, the other thing that we can do is just, you know, do a ramp plus and a ramp minus. And that's building effects in Granima 2 manually. You can also do position effects in a very similar way. So before we end, we'll just we'll just do one. Of course, the other thing I have to do is take our selection so it's a global effect and run our red and blue to make sure it does actually work. it doesn't really it's always good to test there we go I still got that pink pop in that I don't like we're gonna do it with two groups so we're replicating the effect totally there we go And they're now identical effects. So now if we clear this out and we grab our lead pars and we try it on global, we should get exactly the same behavior as we did before. So before we conclude, let's have a look at doing a selective pan tilt effect. So we're going to grab our 101s. And we're going to create one that uses two positions that we created in the previous episode, which is stage left and stage right. So we go through the normal procedure of creating a selective preset. We grab our fixtures we want. We click store. We right click or we click the edit key. 
we then go to add and we grab the parameters we want in this case pan and tilt and then because it is a selective effect we can select our low value of stage right and our high value of stage left we're also going to drop the speed down to 5 bpm clear out just because we can run the effect and then when we bring it up we've got a nice sine wave between those two positions once again we can also modify the way that it is getting between those positions we could make it a ramp or even you know a, a sine wave you can even make them if we if we set groups to one they'll all be doing the same thing the reason I like selective position uh, effects is simply because I can define essentially its minimum and maximum rather than being at the beck and call of you know oh I've got to slightly change my pan so it misses a wall I can say right this is the start point and this is the end point of the effect and I only want you to go between those two points nothing else and once again we can mess with our blocks we can do blocks of two we can drop in some wings you can do some really cool things anyway thank you for watching lesson six uh, this one was only created simply because it was mainly requested and mostly requested a lot so your comments really do help thank you very much for watching be sure to uh share this video thanks